Okay, class, in this video, we're going to cover 5.1, which is basic set concepts. Um, so for number one, it says determine if the collection is not well defined and therefore is not a set. The collection of current MLB Major League Baseball or basketball, no, I think basketball is called something different. <laughs> MLB players, I am not a sports person, so. I'm the wrong person to ask about this. Um, and it says, the answer is the collection is well-defined and therefore it is a set. Um, same directions, determine whether the collection is well-defined and therefore is not well-defined and therefore not a set. So either it is well-defined and it's a set or it's not well-defined and it's not a set. So for number two, it says the collection of the five worst US vice president. Now in this case, the collection is not well-defined. Um, therefore it is not a set. And the reason that it's not well-defined is because the word worse is subject to opinion. And when you're talking about sets, you're talking about data or facts. These are what they are. They are not opinions of anyone or anything, okay? And so you can't have a set based on an opinion. And to call something the worst or the best um, is not something that, that you can define as a set. That is not a valid data, okay? Now, if you were to say, you know, the set of people that voted for this vice president as the worst, that's different, okay? Because that is a number of people that gave their specific opinion. And so then those people can be collected together. Um, but as far as collecting who the five uh, vice presidents are, the five worst vice presidents, um, that's gonna require, um, I guess you could see who's the most worst if you, if you did, that because then you could rank them whoever got the most votes whoever the five top people are the ones that are considered quote unquote the worst but the way it's worded right now you cannot do that that is not a definition of a set so if it's based on opinion do not mark it as a set it is not well defined enough to be a set for number three it says write a description of the set so the set is January, June, and July. Now those are months in, in the calendar, but there is something specific about these three months. It's not all the months in the calculator, otherwise it'd be January through December. It's just these three months. So why just these three months? What relationship do these three months have in common? And the relationship is, is that they're the only three months in the whole year that begin with the letter J. So number four says, express the set using the roster method. This is the roster method. It's when you have the braces and then you have each item or element in the set listed and separated with a comma. That's called the roster. So it says, express this set in roster method. So this is all X's such that X is a natural number and X is greater than five. So this set describes the natural numbers greater than five. Natural numbers are like counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all, so forth. So all the counting numbers greater than five would be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, forever and ever and ever, right? Until you get toward infinity. So that's why we have these um, ellipses here to let you know that that set just keeps going and going and going. Um, Number five says express the set using roster method. And so here it's talking about um, X such that X is a natural number and X is between um, five and nine. So in this case, the set describes the natural numbers between five and nine. Notice that there's no bars on either side. So five and nine are not included in this list. So the number, the counting numbers basically between five and nine is six, seven, and eight. So for number six, it says determine if the given set is the empty set. This is literally a set notation with nothing on the inside. That is different than having the number zero on the inside. Zero is a number and therefore it is a value in the set. 
But when the set has absolutely nothing in it, like nothing is in there, then that is considered the empty set. So here it says number seven, determine if the set is the empty set. So it says X such that X is a planet in our solar system where whose name begins with the letter Q. Since there are no planets in our solar system that begin with the letter Q, there are no planets in this set, making the set empty. So the answer is the set is the empty set. Then number eight says determine if the set is the empty set. So here you have X such that X is less than nine and X is greater than 13. So I plotted X is less than nine. I also plotted X graphed X is greater than three. And the solution, because it says the word and, the word and means on the combined number line, this one, only draw or shade where the two number lines above overlap. So when this says the word or, you just transpose both onto that final number line. But when it says the word and, you only can transpose the parts that they overlap. But look, here's nine and here's 13. They never actually overlap anywhere. So then I cannot shade anywhere. And since your, in, your number line is completely empty, that means the set has no values in it. So the set is the empty set. Now, number nine, let's see if I can get that in there. There we go. For number nine, it says, determine whether the given statement is true or false. 32 is an element of, that's what the symbol means. 32 is an element of this set. Now that set appears to be odd numbers between 15 and 33. So what I wrote is this set appears to be all odd numbers between 15 and 33. Since 32 is not an odd number, 32 is not an element of that set. So the answer is, is that this statement is false. 32 is not an element of this set. Now here it says, determine whether the given statement is true or false. So eight is not an element of this set. Now the set says one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way to 36. So this set appears to be the set of all natural numbers, counting numbers starting at one, from one to 36. Eight is a natural number between one and 36. Therefore, eight is an element of the set. But this is saying that eight is not an element of the set. Therefore, my answer is that that statement up there is false. Now, number 11 says determine whether the statement is true or false. 12 is not an element of X such that X is a natural number and X is less than 12. So the set that they're talking about here is the set of all natural numbers less than 12. Now, while 12 is a natural number, 12 is not less than 12. So 12 is not an element of this set. And since it states that 12 is not an element of this set, then my uh, statement up there is true. Now, number 12 says, determine whether the statement is true or false. The set five is an element of the set two, five, seven. Now, the element five is an element of the set two, five, seven, but the set five is not an element of the set 257, okay? So here, for you to say that it's not is true, okay? And that problem will make more sense. Is it in this problem? I wanted to see if it was in this section or if it happens in another section. Um. No, I think it happens in another section. The only thing that would make this statement true is if this set had a two in squigglies, had a five in squigglies, and had a seven in squigglies. Because then you have one giant set with a bunch of 
smaller sets inside. And then this set would be one of the sets that are inside that larger set. <coughs> but sets and elements are two different descriptions. So you have to be very, very, very careful with that particular problem, okay? And we are going to see another problem, probably not in this section, probably in a future section, where they will ask you the same question, but it will say, um, it will have the two in squigglies, the five in squigglies, and the seven in squigglies. And then in that case, this is an element of that set if the five were in squigglies inside the bigger squigglies, okay? So it's a little confusing, I know, but bear with me, we'll get through the rest of this. Um, so number 13 says, find the cardinal number for the given set. Cardinal number is basically the count of the number of different elements in a set, okay? Another word that they use instead of different is distinct. So four, six, eight, 16, and 15 are all distinct numbers. They're all different from one another. And so I can count each one of those when finding the cardinal number. And so there are one, two, three, four, five, six um, elements here. So then my cardinal number is six. So number 14 has the same directions, find the cardinal number. There's only one thing in this set and that is the word 15. So the cardinal number of this set is there's just one element. So it, the cardinal number is one. And the cardinal number is written as in of the name of the set, okay? Now for 15, it says, same thing, find the cardinal number. So B is X such that X is a natural number and X is between three and 12. But this time we get to include the three and we get to include the 12. So then the counting numbers between three and 12, again, we get to include three. So it starts at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And we also get to include 12. So 12 is the last entry. Now these are all different from each other, so I can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And so my cardinal number is 10. Now for number 16, it says A is the set 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. B is the set 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And the question is, are the sets equal? The answer here is no. And they are not equal because in order for them to be equal, they have to have the same exact elements. And they do not have the same exact elements. This set has a 13, whereas this one does not. And the bottom set has an eight where the top set does not. Okay, so they are not equal. Are the sets equivalent? Yes. In order for you to be equivalent, all you have to do is have the same cardinal number. And since there are five distinct numbers in set A, and there are five distinct numbers in set B, that means that they do have the same cardinal number, and so therefore they are considered equivalent. So basically they're equivalent in size, but they're not equal in the fact that they represent the same exact thing. Now, number 17 is the same directions. It's uh, find the cardinal numbers. So set A is the set of natural numbers where X is between 102 and 107. You can include 102 and you can include 107. So that would be 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, and we can include 107. Now set B is all the natural numbers between 101 and 108, but we cannot include 101 and we cannot include 108. So the next natural number after 101 is 102, then 103, then 104, then 105, then 106, then 107, and then 108, but we cannot include 108. So we chop it off and we close the set there. Now, both of these do have a cardinal number of six because there are six numbers in those each of those sets. Are the sets equivalent? Explain. The sets are equivalent because the cardinal numbers are the same. Are the sets equal? Explain. The, the sets are equal because the set A contains the exact same elements as set B. 
now for number 18. It says, determine whether the set is finite or infinite. So it says, uh, X is all real numbers and X is greater than or equal to 600. So I can include 600. So the numbers would be 600, 601, 602, so on and so forth. I just need to be bigger than 600. So the numbers can go on and on and on and on and on toward infinity. That means that the set is infinite. It does not ever stop. Infinity itself is not a number. It's just, you're just going and going and going and going with no end in sight. I shouldn't even say in sight, with no end, period. Okay? So if it's never going to end, that's why we have these ellipses here. And that's literally what tells you that the set is infinite when it ends in ellipses. Because notice here, this problem has ellipses too, but they're not at the end. They're in the middle. Okay? So this one says, um, determine whether it's finite or infinite, and it's all the natural numbers where X is less than or equal to 7 million. So all the natural numbers less than 7 million are 1, 2, 3, 4, a count all the way up to 7 million. But guess what? The cardinal number here is 7 million because there's 7 million entries in there. And that's a finite number. That's not on and on and on and on and on. It goes to 7 million and then it stops, okay? And so that one's a little bit different. That one, the ellipses are in the middle, which means it will be a finite set. When the ellipses are on the end, it will be an infinite set. Now, I think we got one more question in this and it's take the whole page. <laughs> so let me read the paragraph and then I'll scoot the paragraph up. Let's let it focus, there it goes. So number 20 says the bar graph shows the differences among the age groups on the implicit association test that measures levels of racial prejudice. Higher scores indicate stronger bias. Use the information given by the graph to represent the following set by the roster method or use the appropriate notation to indicate that the set is the empty set. So either you're going to get a set with in roster form or you're just going to say the answer is the empty set. It says X such that X is a group whose score indicates little or no bias. And so there's a key there in the graph. It says if, if the value is less than 25, okay, then there's little to no bias. So if these are the scores, I'm looking for a score less than 25. So I don't have, I didn't mark it on here, but there's 24, 25 would probably be somewhere around here. So I'm gonna try to draw this. Oh gosh, my pen, I just moved. Anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. So there's 25. So anything that has, um less than 25 would be what they're talking about here okay but little to no bias is a score less than 25 however no group has a score less than 25 oh my goodness we're just biased no matter what age you are that's awful anyway um so because there's no group that is less then that has a score less than 25, then that means that there's not going to be any elements in this set. There's nobody that fits this description. So there will be nobody in the set, which means it will look like this, which is called the empty set. This is also called the empty set. Another word that they use is the null set, N-U-L-L, -L, okay? So the empty set is the same thing as the null set. It's basically a set that doesn't have nothing in it, okay? And that's nothing, nothing. Not nothing as in like the number zero, nothing. I'm nothing. So that is the end of this um, section and I will see you in the next video.